episode 770 of the Scott Gibson Show. I am Scott Gibson. Who the else? Who the else? Who else would I fucking be? Uh, how are we? Hope we're safe, hope we're well. Um, I mean, let's just get it out of the way. Let's just say it now. January 21st, get it in your diary. It's the day the people who survived the virus will finally meet their maker. January 21st. Um, you would have heard the news by now, I imagine. Um, if you are in uh, Shotland, like myself, you're probably waiting for our roadmap, <laughs> the roadmap to discovery, to be released. Um, I am recording this on Tuesday, 23rd of February. Uh, we are four months away from the complete destruction of man. Um, but right now, um, I'm just double checking the uh, the news. Right now, I've, I've no I've no seen the roadmap. It's just uh, there's been an announcement by Nicola, so I'm a, I'm waiting for someone far smarter than I to actually take the key points in it and uh, and, and knock it into a, a handy one pager that we that then podcasters can uh, tear to pieces. So it looks as if Courtney England, Bojangles, setting his map out early, and then uh, as always. Uh, we we respond, you know, uh, friendly fire, if you will. Although quite alarming that the um, Scottish Minister for uh, Health has already said it, it will be a caution, a cautious approach towards ending lockdown. Just fucking end it, man. So we will see. Like I said, twenty third of February, recording this twenty first of June, apparently is the end. Um, and let me just say this now. Let me just let me just get it out there. Let me get it recorded so that it is it's 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 in stone. It's gospel. I would have a cheeky fiver on the death toll on the twenty first of June being greater than that of all COVID deaths in the UK. I'm just saying it. I mean, we're not going to make fun of. Uh, People's mental health. In fact, we're going to speak about uh, a Japanese man in, in a moment who's trying to uh, combat that. But you saw after the last easing of the lockdown, you know the the uh, the the amount of deaths associated with alcohol abuse, uh, people who were fighting, people who took their own life. This this is going to be, it's 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 listen, I as much as you were excited at the at the prospect at the thought. Of being released from this prison. Um, but it's it's worrying, man, because people kind of control themselves, you know. And and I know that we are going to have a gradual decrease in, in the current lockdown situation from now until then. It's not going to be, you know, you're not going to go to bed one night on Sunday and wake up Monday morning and it's like fucking the swinging sixties again. But it ne- it needs to be a gradual phase. People need to go early. And I know that there's going to be a lot of people who say things like, you're just, I mean, scaremongering is a bit extreme, Gibble, but people will always talk up the worst in things. I'm sure you will have seen the picture, the famous picture, apparently it's from Manchester, I did not know this. And it's people saying like, you know, the one I saw was a, a picture of the image that said sometime after lunch on January 21st. And it's like, people get off each other on the street, there's Polish wrestling something at the ground, there's something being sick, there's, it's just a, an average scene you used to see on any uh, high street up and down the country. But th- there's a worry, man, that it's going to go up, and I, and I know, honestly, come June, the weather's going to be great, people will have saved their pennies, and when everything is eased, it's going to be fucking carnage, it's honestly, it's going to be fucking carnage, if you are the type of person who does not enjoy physical violence, uh, loutish behaviour, basically if if your first thought on being told that the lockdown and the whole COVID fucking shenanigans is going to end on June the 21st, if your first thought was not I am going to go and get fucked out of my mind on as much alcohol and drugs as I am physically able to squeeze into my body. If that wasn't your first thought, my suggestion would be stay in the house. Stay in the house. Stay in the fucking house. Think of January 21st as the purge, right? 
January 21st is the final push. It is the last nail in the coffin of COVID. Maybe this is what COVID's all been. Maybe this is what the Chinese wanted. After all, they wanted to drive the British lagerlout, the chav, the ned, to the point of extremity. Four oh, that's a ban. Pushes to the point where everybody's ready to bust. So come January 21st, sorry, June 21st even, when it's lifted, everybody goes fucking bananas. And maybe that's the final cull. <laughs> There's no, we've created a virus that kills pensioners and vulnerable people. How are we going to get rid of that kind of working class scum level? But what we'll do is we'll keep them locked in the house for a year. And then on the first day, when they're all set free, everybody will drink themselves into a grave. And and I know that some of you may be going, you're putting a very negative impact on a lot of people in this country. Again, when was this announced? Yesterday? An article today in the uh, the newspaper. Um, and, and the title of the article is, Tears for Beers. I mean, Tears for Beers is the article. It's the headline, sorry, of this article. I can't speak today. It's the headline of this article. And it is detailing how you can drink <laughs> throughout the, 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 the decrease in tear structure until uh, June 21st. So if, if people don't think that this is what's going to be geared up, I mean, it's going to be happier. Forget happier. It's happy month. It's going to be carnage. So I would suggest if you are not going to go out and partake in the uh, in the end of the world, just stay in, man, on the 22nd of January. Just stay. It's one more day. It's one more day. Let the nutters have their night. Let them have the freedom in the streets. And then you can go and roam. Ramble, you know. Go to a village fair, a food market. Whatever it is fucking middle class people do. Go rowing, shooting. You know, get a fox hunt on the go. Just do it on the twenty second. Um, so interesting to see what will happen over the next couple of months. I imagine as we get closer and closer to the summer as well, if there is any kind of deviation from that original roadmap, there'll be fucking hell to pay. Um, so let's just hope that everything starts to move towards. And I'm I'm not being pessimistic. I'm just I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get excited. I'm not gonna agree to things or push things further until the day I am standing on a stage, microphone in hand, and there is an audience in a theatre listening to me talk shit, then I'll start to believe that it can happen. Because right now, at any moment, things could change again. But this this article, this is this, and I was looking for an article that was gonna gonna give me the bullet points of the of the fucking roadmap, right? Um, which is just another political buzzword to fucking so people can say, have you seen the roadmap? Have you seen the roadmap? The roadmap to success, the roadmap to victory, the roadmap to freedom. And the article that came up was this, Tears for Beers. Tears for Beers. End of lockdown explained measure by measure through the medium of booze. Because that is how the average person understands it. Uh, it's a it's a, a, four st- a five-step process. I do apologise. A five-step process. <laughs> Uh, step 1A, March the 8th, and this is, now I'm not making this up, this is the this is the language used in explaining the, uh, the destructure of the lockdown process so that the average man and woman can understand it, alright? So this is taking a, a global pandemic, something that has affected the entire world, the globe, there's not a, there's not a part of this world that hasn't been affected by COVID-19. Millions of deaths, tens of millions of people infected. People have lost their lives. People have lost everything. They've had their whole worlds turned upside down. And finally, we are in a position in this country where we start to move, start to move towards a point where we can try and get back to some kind of normal life by decreasing the current structure that's in place to try and tackle the rise of the virus. And how is this communicated to the public? By telling you how quickly you can get fucking bevied in a park. <laughs> Honest to God, man. Just fucking torch the whole country. <laughs> this is this is how 
Never, never in a never in a lifetime. Never in your grandparents' lifetime, your parents' lifetime, your great grandparents, never have they lived through a global pandemic. Every corner of the globe. How should we communicate the information to the people as to how we will uh, put forth this roadmap for success to actually get everyone back to normal life? Why don't we put a detailed plan together? Um, release a 300 played page dossier so that people can go through that no 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 man no they want bullet points they want bullet points right what about six or seven possibly ten key points that we will use to destructure the current uh lockdown uh climatization so that people may become <laughs> back to normal civilization and read no man no man no man can't you want to know why not getting pissed so just put a detailed plan together telling people when they can get bevied. That is the sad situation. Remember at the start of lockdown when people were of the opinion of we're going to come out this better people. We're going to come out the other end stronger, faster, better, more thoughtful, more loving, more caring, a better humanity, better people, a better country, a better nation. And I can't wait for that day to come. And then fast forward a year down the line and it's the exact same. When can we get bevied? When can we fight in the street? So, five steps. Step 1A, March the 8th. Uh, this is the beginning of the of the um, the easing of lockdown structures. So, step 1A, March 8th. Get this in your diary. You can get drunk with one friend in the park. Brilliant! You can get drunk with one friend in the park. <laughs> because everybody knows that's, that's how you measure booze. That's the start of it. You know, getting pissed with one pal in the park. Step one B. We're still we're still easing in gently. March twenty ninth. March is a good month. So at the start of month, you can get pissed with one pal in the park. March twenty ninth, you can get drunk with five other people in your garden. Unbelievable, Jeff. In the in the short space of less than three weeks, you've have you've gone from having to go to the park to get pissed with your best pal. To having fiveies in your own garden, getting steaming drunk. <laughs> and the thing is, why does it every single one of these starts with get drunk? Now, is this the way for the government scientists to tell us that in order to combat COVID nineteen, you actually have to remain drunk for the rest of your life? Is there something that happens to your bloodstream when you're completely intoxicated that the virus can't get into your body? Is that what it's telling us? Is that actually what's happening? Maybe, maybe the, maybe that really is. Like that's all the tests they've been doing, everything they've discovered. The the harsh reality of it is the only way to fully vaccinate yourself from the virus is to get the injection, get the jab, and then remain intoxicated for the rest of your life. Now, for some people in this country, that will not be difficult. The only thing they're missing is the fucking jack, you know? But every single one of these tears starts with get drunk. Doesn't it say have a drink? Doesn't it say step one, have a drink with a friend in the park? You know? Again, this is this is this is who we're targeting, man. Uh so step one, get drunk with one person, uh sorry, one friend, and it has to be a friend, so it's not a stranger. One friend in the park. Step two, get drunk with five other people in your garden. Uh, step two, which is the 12th of April, get drunk in the pub garden with five other people. So we've gone from March 29th to April 12th and we've moved from a squad of five getting pissed in your garden to getting pissed in the pub's garden. Okay, moving in the right direction. May 17th, step three. Now we've had to wait a month from getting pissed in the garden, but where are we at this point? May 17th, get the date in your diary, you can get drunk inside the pub with five other people. Now, it seems to be as if we're moving in fives here, so I would suggest between now and March 29th, you get your five people and you get that nailed in. Maybe you hold online editions, right? Maybe you have like a family style uh, Britain's Got Talent. You decide who's in your five, you know? I don't know, that's for you to decide. Do you go for heavy bevy merchants? Or do you go for light drinkers so there's more for you to mop up? I don't know. But we're moving in groups of five and that's important to understand. So step three, May 17th, 
you've now moved inside the pub and you're getting pissed with five other people. No mention of social distancing, no mention if you need to wear a mask, no mention of opening times, operating times, no mention if there's a, a minimum allowance, no mention if you have to have food wet, that does not matter because all we need is the headlines and the headline is May 17th, you can get pissed in a pub with five year pals and then we move to step four which is June 21st and it says here and I quote and I'm not making this up, it says book the week off, get drunk inside or outside. That's what it says. This is a national newspaper. Right? This is not an online blog. This is not a comedian. This is a national newspaper. And the process that they are trying to explain to you how the roadmap has been set up by the Prime Minister of this country, they are explaining it and how you can get drunk and with how many people. And when the last step, when when we are released from the prison, when there will be people who on June 21st will go to be visiting family they have not seen for over a year. There will be people going to visit grandchildren who have been born in lockdown, who they have never seen. There will be people who have been isolating themselves on their own. They've not had any other human contact for over a year by that point. And the way it is communicated at a level at which the average person in this country can understand it, they say, book the week off, get drunk inside or outside. What is the fuck? There is no hope, man. There is no hope for this country. No hope. <laughs> book the week off, man. Everybody in the country book the week off, crash the economy, we're all getting fucked. I even saw an article that apparently over 100,000 people had uh, had signed asking for June the 21st to be a bank holiday. What the fuck is going on, man? What is going on? Oh, so let's just hope we move towards it and let's hope that come the summer, 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 summer time, let's hope that we can uh, enjoy ourselves. Now listen, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying this as if, you know, I'm a pure fucking uh, humbug I am very much looking forward to being in a pub again very much looking forward to it never been a big drinker before uh, lockdown's changed that um, I, I used to I, I cannot wait to be in a pub again I really can't I can't wait to be in a beer garden I can't wait to be in a pub I can't wait to just sit in a pub and have strangers around you and just that, that noise that buzz I can't wait for it I miss it I generally miss it I keep getting flashbacks. We we went to a, a place in Edinburgh. Uh, ironically, you know, as hipsters do, um, it's like a I suppose you would call it a pool hall, an old fashioned pool hall. But it's got I think it's got bowling lanes in it and snooker table, and it's basically the pub where, from what I could understand, in the night we were in, uh, where all the teenagers go to get served, and uh, I mean it's huge inside, right? It's fucking massive. What is it name, mate, man? Is it ball games or? I don't know. It's a horrendous pub, right? And uh, I think they've got like two or three of them. But all I keep thinking back to is that because this was, it was like a cattle market. It was fucking mobbed. You had old Neds, young Neds, dafties, underagers, old booze hounds. You obviously had old guys in there as well, which was strange. And I remember saying to the missus, this obviously had been a pub for years. And then somebody's brought it over and they've went, let's put snooker tables in it. Uh, and let's put a bowling alley in it, because then we'll get the wains in, and we can serve food, and there's really dark corners when bams can stab each other for half a bag of coke in the corner. So it's obviously one of these places where it's been a pub for years, it's bought over, it's completely done up, it's became, or they've tried to make it hip and trendy, but it's in a really shit by Edmund, so it's not going to be hip and trendy, and there's old guys in there in their 50s, 60s, 70s, who went, I drank in this boozer since old Mick Flanagan ran it, Back in 1906, and if you think I'm leaving, you got another fucking thing coming. So they just keep turning up, even though they hate the pub now, and they've got to drink Carlin. <laughs> but they just keep coming. So it's an odd place, but all I keep thinking about is that time we went in, and we had one drink and we left, because it was hell. But just the sheer volume of people in it. I think it'll take time to get back to that again. I think it'll take time to get back to what you remember life being. But it will be it will be nice to be 
among people again, you know. I wonder I wonder how long it's gonna take. I wonder how long it's gonna take for us to adjust to to being back amongst people. Like, for example, the first time you're in a pub or the first time you're in a restaurant or wherever you are, no mask, right? We're back to normal, and somebody bumps into you. You know, you're going to freak out, in the name of fuck, I've got a virus. Is that going to be constantly in your... The first time somebody coughs in a pub. You know, the first time an old guy has one of their fucking pensioner, you know, pure, like they're hucking up a lung. I wonder how long it'll take before we're all comfortable again being around each other. Who knows, man. But wh whatever is happening behind the scenes, I pray to God from now until June the 21st, please, 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 I hope to God the NHS is ready, because if they think they have been under a strain up to now, it will be a fucking tsunami of pain that will be unleashed on June 21st. So just look after yourself is what I'm saying, look after yourself, you know? Just take it easy, man, take it fucking easy. Maybe just, maybe just keep getting pissed in a park with your pal for a little bit longer. Before you go back into five years running amok inside and outside a pub on June 21st. Maybe, maybe let's do that for a wee bit. Right, I've got an article here in, in the Metro, which um, I think is related to Scotland, in our lockdown. And again, we, you know, listen, I've, I've said this before, I am, um, you know, I vote SNP, I've been an SNP voter. My whole life, I, I still think that Scotland should be independent. I believe in an independent Scotland. But uh, I have been, I have been tested over the uh, over the last couple of months and certainly year with the uh, with the response to, to COVID. You know, it's it's, ne it's never going to be an easy, uh, it was never going to be an easy situation. But um, you know, I think that with us with, with us being able to see how other countries have reacted to it, and I'm particularly referring to New Zealand and I know that they had gone back into a lockdown again but so had we and the, the restrictions had certainly never been as as bad as, as ours um, so I think I'd just hope for a little bit more um, I think I think that's how I'm feeling I, I was talking to a friend about this during the week and I, and I think I probably just wanted a little bit more decision making rather than constantly reacting to Westminster because it does feel as if now our position, Scotland's position on easing lockdown and getting back to normality is adding two weeks on to whatever Westminster says. That's what it feels like. Now, again, I am forming this opinion being completely ill-informed, but that that's what it does feel like. So I imagine, I, I don't think that, that we, I, I hope we are out by June 21st. I hope it's the same across the country, but you know, who knows in Scotland. Article here um, from our good friends at the Metro, free for a reason. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon has set out her roadmap for lockdown in Scotland with major easing expected from April, uh, if data allows. She said the country would return to the localised system of levels similar to England's previous tier systems. Uh, in summer, we are really hope to be living... Sorry, in summer, we really hope to be living with much greater freedom, uh, said Nicola Sturgeon, but urge people to continue to follow the rules uh, for now. Uh, she said, it is therefore from the last week of April that we would expect to see phased but significant reopening of the economy, including non-essential retail hospitality uh, services like gyms and hairdressers. And of course, the more of us who have been vaccinated uh, and the more we all stick to the rules, um, the faster and safer places will be. If we all stay in this together, our, process, our progress will be greater. At the moment, the whole of Scotland is currently in level four with people told to remain at home. Moving back to level three would allow sectors such as non-essential retail to reopen. Ms Sturgeon told the Scottish Parliament she hoped the stay-at-home order would be able to be lifted by April 5th. <sighs> April 5th, man. So, I mean, going by that, it would sound as if we are, we're going to remain in, in level four for the whole of March anyway. Again, who knows, man? You really don't know. Uh, the vaccinations offer us a route back to normality, uh, Mr. Sturgeon said, but added that taking the breaks off too quickly will allow the virus to get ahead of us again. She acknowledged that this can be a frustrating message, but it's an essential one. 
last week the rec- the country recorded this is Scotland ha- ha- hardly any reduction at all in coronavirus case numbers largely because the spread of the most transferable new variant blah blah blah, blah. yesterday children in Scotland returned to early learning and pupils in primary one to three returned to school some secondary pupils returning from essential practical work my surgeon says it's important to see what the effects of the transmission for third blah blah blah, blah. right so it, it looks as if we're not going to be making a the uh, Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP are not going to make any any uh, any concrete decisions on dates at this point, so we will wait and see. We'll wait and see what happens, but let's hope. Let's hope something changes soon, man. Let's hope something changes soon. Right, uh, something I wanted to talk about, uh, and when I saw this, I actually saw this uh, a couple of days ago, and I kind of I kind of ignored it, and I thought this is just. Again, this is just people being idiots and just going mad. And then when when I saw the article come up today, I was like, of everything that's happened in the world, I don't know how many times I start such a, a sentence now with, of everything that's happened in the world, this is what we fucking are going on about. You may have seen it. Uh, the Cadbury's creme egg, which seems to cause a hell of a lot of trouble for a fucking cream egg. Um, It's got an advert. It's got a new advert out for a cream egg. And uh, it has a, it's what's been referred to in the paper as a gay kiss. It's two gentlemen uh, kissing uh, with an egg in their mouth. So one gentleman puts the egg in his mouth, leans into the other gentleman, uh, he wraps his gums around the egg, hello there, and uh, they share a smooch and then bite the egg in half. Disgusting. Not disgusting for the gay kiss, uh, you know, not at all, but disgusting for... I want. I was having a kiss with a man. I'd want to enjoy that kiss. I wouldn't then want to find my mouth filled with half a cream egg, would you? And I think half a cream egg is a lot to find your mouth. It's also uh, egg shaped, so one is getting the fat end, one is getting the pointy end. Anyway, twenty thousand people apparently have signed a petition to ban the uh, the cabbage cream egg advert because it contains a gay kiss. Now, I would say, I would say, and I don't think I'm out, outside the realms of uh, reality here. After everything that's happened in the world, after all the hardship we've gone through, what is the one thing that I always say, the only way to solve a situation is with, say it with me now, extreme violence. Now, I think we would all agree that if in 2021, after going through a year of the global pandemic, if there are anybody, if there's anyone out there who is genuinely offended, angered or upset at two men kissing, two women kissing, trans people, a trans woman kissing a trans man, if that genuinely upsets you to the point where you have to complain to the Ombudsman, please, please, please get in the fucking sea. And I don't think that is an extreme point of view to hold anymore. I think that somebody has to make the decision to say, Things have gone on long enough. We've given you too much of a leeway. If this is upsetting you, not only do we not want you to participate in watching television anymore, we don't want you to participate in life. Get in the fucking van, get in the fucking oven, and fuck off, you pair of cunts. Now, if the advert for the cream egg was uh, a man goes home to his uh, loving husband or boyfriend or partner, whatever, or fuck buddy, they don't need to be married. You know, and he's like, Franco, you want a cream egg? Oh, I didn't know they were out. They've just come out this morning. And he turns around, bends him over the kitchen counter, whips his drawers down, fires a full cream egg up his arse, and then he farts the cream egg in his mouth and they eat it together. Then I would say there's possibly room for complaint because maybe it's on before the watershed. But other than that, fuck off. Fuck off. Get the names of these people. 20,000 fuckers. 20,000 people. I'd like to complain about the Cabbage Cream Egg advert. Um, okay, sir, I've, I've not actually seen the advert. Can you talk me through it? Um, yes, I, I will. Uh, a man uh, takes a cream egg and, and sticks it up his arsehole and then farts it in another man's mouth. My God, what an advert. But no, it's just two guys kissing. What, how fucked up do you need to be to sit in the house going, Margaret, have you seen this? I was just about to enjoy a cream egg and... And there's two men kissing on the television. That's it, right? Go through the kitchen. Anything owned by Cadbury. Get it in the pen. We're, we're boycotting Cadbury. Fucking losers. 
This article here, which is even worse, it says more than 24,000 people, which is even worse than 20,000. More than 24,000 people have signed a petition calling to ban a cabbage cream egg advert after it features two men kissing. Get the names of these people and fucking have them killed. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done with people. I'm done with idiots. I'm done with it. Fuck off. Last month, Cabri released uh, a new advert for its well-loved cream egg to celebrate five decades of the chocolate treat. Features real-life couple Callum Sterling and Dale Morgan, uh, who are seen sharing a creme egg uh, through a kiss. While many praise Cabri for the, cam- the campaign's in- inclusivity, more than 20,000 people are seeking to have it banned for being offensive to Christians. Ah, oh, fuck off, Christians. <laughs> This is the problem with reading these articles as I record the podcast. I really should read them first because when something like that comes up, it fucking angers me. How can how can Christians be offended by two men kissing? This is the same fuckers that take advice for a book. It's full of sodomy. There's fucking cunts feeding their wains to lions, bugging each other's asses. It's full. It's it's a it's, the Bible's like fucking Lord of the Rings, man. It's full of magic. There's a man who takes a fish and he makes a hundred fish. And then some other guy's like, here, you better fucking murder your boy, man, because that bush is on fire. And it's fucking nonsense. <laughs> it might upset Christians. Good. See if you're a Christian. Shut up. Right? <laughs> oh. What about peace and earth and all that fucking nonsense, eh? Is that not, is that not, I mean, I'm not a Christian, right? So I'm, I'm struggling here. I don't know. You know, I wish I knew parts of the Bible so I could go, hey, listen, what about fucking uh, John 365, eh? Or Franco 252? What about that? When he says, uh, blessed be the fruit under his eye, upon to him as you do to her, uh, sleep with your husband's partner, and then take it in the arse, he said upon God to himself. I wish I had all that so I could go fucking back and forth for him. I don't! Because it might upset Christians. Fucking hell. I would put money that if you took any one of these Christians, right, any one of these Christian men who complained about this advert and put them in a room with this couple in a box of cream eggs, within half an hour, that Christian would be on his knees with a belly full of cream egg and semen, loving life, because it might upset Christians. Fuck off. Christians shouldn't be having chocolate. Is there no... Some shit is Lent no one knew. We know in Lent, she's not be geeing that up. How about you gee up being a fucking sad little bastard? <laughs> Come forth, my son. What are you giving up for Lent this year? I'm, I'm going to give up chocolate, uh, father, and sugar. Okay, my son. Blessed be the fruit under his eye. Go forth. And uh, good morning, my son. What are you giving up for Lent? I'm going to give up being a sad little moany cunt, father. <laughs> oh. The article goes on to say, the petition uh, has been posted by Citizen Go, a campaign website that regularly takes on conservative petitions opposing the decriminalisation of LGBTQ plus rights and, abo- and abortions. Oh, let's fucking take these cunts down, man. This is a problem. I don't know enough about these people. Citizen Go. Never heard of that in my life. You know? If somebody had said to me, have you heard of Citizen Go? It sounds like a budget hotel chain. You know? Listen, we had a lovely weekend in Berlin staying in Citizen Go. You should really check it out. 42 euros a night. One continental breakfast. Absolutely fantastic. It's a massive bowl of cream eggs in the foyer. <laughs> oh... Why is stuff like this not on the telly? Why is it that we all know about uh, fucking Tommy Robinson? We're constantly getting new kip shit. We're constantly getting told about fucking right wingers. Why are we not getting this news? Why is fucking Sunday in the news at 10 or, or a big news story no sitting down and going, listen, uh, in 10 tonight's broadcast, you all need to know about this bunch of fucking bampots called Citizen Go who are trying to buy a cabbage cream egg because it's got two guys kissing each other and it's upset the Christians. They're also no happy trans people and they want to ban abortions. Who the fuck do these cunts think they are? <laughs> Let's fucking do it. Come on, man. Um, it asks, the group asks, for the advert to be removed from all platforms. No. And describes the kiss between the couple as highly charged sexually provocative act. 
They're just, they're, they're just touching lips, man. It's not even like a proper fucking, a full-on snog. Like I said, if, if they had, you know, if the advert was provocatively sexually charged, then I'd maybe go, hey, the Christians aren't going to like this. Put it on after nine o'clock. We want the advert to be removed because the kiss between the couple is highly charged, sexually provocative. In the name of God, man. These fucking Christians. Uh, by choosing to feature a same-sex couple, Cadbury are clearly hoping to cause controversy and escape criticism by claiming that any objections must be rooted in homophobia, which it is! But members of the LG LGBT community have also expressed a dislike in the campaign. The petition said, have they fuck. By choosing to feature a same-sex couple, Cabri are clearly hoping to cause controversy. Why, why is it controversial that it's two men? It's the same way, like, when they had the Sainsbury's advert and it was a black family for London and they all fucking went after them not about that. Why is that controversial? Here's something the Christians need to hear. There's men that like men and there's women that like women. Get over it. I, I, get, I find myself getting really annoyed now with, when it comes to things like sexuality. And it... And it describes people as being gay or straight or bi or they feel as if somehow it's like a character trait. I don't care. I don't care. Not in a bad way. Not in a neck. Not like, I don't want to hear what, who or what you put in your mouth. I don't care. I just hope, I hope for a couple of things in life before I fucking shuffle off this earth. I, I hope that we get to a point where social media doesn't exist anymore and it's all destroyed. And I also hope we get to a point where sexuality is not even a thing. Disney, it's, Disney, it's not, it's not even discussed. It's not even a thing anymore. You want to sleep with a man? You want to sleep with a woman? You do. You want? I don't care. That's where I would like to get to. I hope if I have kids, they grow up, and it's never questioned. You know, there's no, uh, there's no discussion over gender. There's no discussion over sexuality. It just Disney. It's not even something that's that's brought up anymore. Let's just get rid of Christians, man. Maybe that's the fucking problem. I've said it before, mate. Fucking anybody religious up the road. Uh, the uh, the group added. I don't know if I even want to read any more about this group because it just annoyed me. Cadbury should not be seeking to hide under the cover of the LGBTQ rights to conduct a campaign which sexually objectifies individuals. If the couple in question were heterosexual, the advertisement would likely be prohibited given the sexually explicit and graphic graphic nature of the kiss. Fuck off. Cadbury's are well aware of the religious significance of Easter. Suck my dick, mate. Therefore, they are trying to cause great, great, atrocious offence to members of the Christian community during the most important feast in the calendar. Listen, I'm not going to... I mean, that is unlikely I was going to buy uh, an Easter egg this year. But see if Cadbury's came out... See if Cadbury released a statement saying, this year, um, we would like to piss off the Christians. Because we all know that Easter is like anything else. It's like Valentine's Day, it's like Mother's Day, it's like Father's Day. It is another reason for us to spend money and keep the economy moving. Nobody even associates Easter with a religious uh, celebration or service anymore. Nobody goes to fucking church because we've all become educated. We know there is no God in religion, it's not real. It's a cult and a way to try and get your money to fund the church. What Easter is about is fucking eggs. Eggs! And baby lamb. That's it. Milk-fed baby lamb. <sniffs> Chef's kiss. That's what Easter is about. So we're going to piss off the Christians. And um, we want you all to uh, to buy uh, Easter eggs. Anything Cadbury's, please buy it. Because we are going to release an advert that is going to blow the Christian socks off. It's going to be a close-up shot of a cream egg, and as the camera pans out, you see that it's inside a man's mouth, and he's getting buggered by an Easter bunny from behind, and then the Easter bunny's going to ejaculate in his back, and it will spell out, Happy Easter from Cadbury's. So we're going to get fined, and we need your money to help us pay the fine. Buy Cadbury's. I'd buy Cadbury's. I'd buy Cadbury's. <laughs> That's why I'd never get a job marking. I almost want to go and buy a box of cream eggs, and fucking rattle it off. A church one day. I mean, obviously not. It's not the church's fault. But whoever these citizen go budget hotel fuckers are. If, I mean, if this was a normal time and we could all be out in the streets together, we could go to their headquarters and fuck a load of eggs after Wendy's. 
Sadly not. Um, so it says, so it's okay when an advert sexualizes a woman uh, to benefit the male gaze and make other women feel inadequate if they do not live up to the beauty standard, he wrote. Uh, but it's not okay in 2021 to have an advert full of multiracial uh, gay couple on the screens for 10 seconds. Eating, kissing, sexualized. Does anyone see how ridiculous this is? Cabaret uh, also hit back at critics defending its advert in a statement to Ad Age, the chocolate maker said, is a progressive brand that spreads a message of inclusion. We are proud of our Golden Gobbly advert, uh, which celebrates the many ways that everyone can enjoy a cream egg. <laughs> Not up the bum at Disney. To illustrate this uh, and showcase the joy of products being a clip of real-life couple sharing a cabaret cream egg, which we included in the advert. Well done, Cabri. And, uh, I mean, if you are a Christian, you know, first of all, have a word with yourself. And then if you are a Christian who is affected by homosexuality in any form, uh, you know, fuck off. Fuck off. There you go. End of discussion. <laughs> I really want a cream egg now. And a right good dick up the bum. I made the mistake of putting the uh, Ladbrokes app back on my phone. And now they just send me fucking notifications every two minutes. I really need to figure out technology. I can turn the bastard off. Is it not enough that I give the fuckers five pound a week? Every week! You know? Five a week I give the cunts. I'm fucking skint, man. I'm skint. And I give these bastards five pound a week. Now, yes, I put a football coupon on. And yes, every week the football coupon gets fucked into a million bits. Of course it does. I imagine they sit in Labrooks HQ and go, oh, we've got another fucking Gibble Coop in. <laughs> Let's see what the daft bastards pick this week. Oh, God. I've not had one winner this season. Not one winner. And honestly, every single week, it is one team that fucks me. Every single week. I fucking hate Labrooks, man. I fucking hate it. That, that's, the, that's the other thing that probably needs to be addressed is the, the gambling situation. How many people have had their lives ruined by gambling during lockdown as well? Quite a few, I'd imagine. Quite a few. Um, right, what else have we got here? Uh, a couple of things to talk about. Um, speaking of people losing their life, um, not a funny subject, but we will uh, use it as a segue. I saw this um, this story and uh, it, it just... It just it it resonated with me first of all and it highlighted the difference in the way in which governments uh, operate and the way in which governments um, value their citizens, the people uh, Japan has um, appointed a minister of loneliness, now there may be some of you thinking, what hipster bullshit is this what I'm fucking hearing, a minister of loneliness what the fuck? Now, you'll have a Minister of Transport, uh, a Minister of Aid, Minister of Defence, Minister of Health, uh, a Minister of Education, Minister of Sport, Minister of Theatre and the Arts. Never a Minister of Loneliness. The reason being, uh, Japan's suicide rate has increased for the first time in 11 years. And as a way to try and combat this, or at least look into it, um, the government has appointed this uh, this minister for loneliness, and before I read any more of the article, it just it just made me think that of everything that we're all going through just now, and uh, and my oddly my mental health has has really dipped this year, um, not to the point where it's it's odd because I almost have this kind of internal barometer now where. Because I got some help in the past and I was on medication for a couple of years, and I probably, if I'm being honest, I need to go back on the medication again. I know I do. But it makes me so... Um, here, here's something, and I'm sure I've, spoke, I've said this before, but I don't daydream when I'm on my depression tablets. And that might be something that's you maybe don't think it is important or it's a big thing, but the only way I can describe it is when I am off medication, and I've been off it for over a year now, so I'm, it's completely out of my system, I have these little daydreams during the day, quite often where, and a lot of that will be, 
a lot of it is negative stuff, and that's how I know that I'm going back into a kind of dark place. But some of it is positive. I will think about some bits of material. I'll think about things for the podcast. And I have these kind of, I don't know if it's moments of fantasy where I play things out in my head, but I certainly know that I daydream and I'm conscious that my mind is 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 working. Now, like I said, the problem being that I am not in control really if they are positive or negative thoughts. And the last couple of weeks, probably the start of this year, it's been more negative than positive and I'm, and I'm kind of in a bit of a slump at the moment. But that's one thing that I've noticed over the years of speaking to GPs about my depression, being on different kinds of medication. The very first thing that stops when I start taking medication is is these, day, these daydreams. I am no longer... Now, I don't know if that's a, a clarity. I don't know if that's actually a positive thing and it clears my mind, but it, it, it almost feels as if there is a part of my brain being shut off. And that's that's what I don't like about it. Um, Again, I, I've gone through different periods where I've convinced myself of things wrongly. I'd originally convinced myself that by taking medication... I wouldn't be funny anymore or I wouldn't be creative anymore. And that's obviously nonsense and proven to be nonsense. But there is a little bit of me that has, over the years of being on medication, I have noticed that one of the big differences is this uh, complete removal of daydreaming. Now, I don't know if that's a part of my brain that shuts off. I don't know what it is. But it's a concern. Um, but like many people, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure... Thousands, probably millions of us, are uh, are struggling again with our mental health. We we don't know when the end is in sight. All right, it's June twenty first, but we don't know. A lot of us are struggling financially, and um, it's been hard. So it is, I suppose, uh, an interesting thing to see that other countries who have, I imagine, you know, a suicide rate similar to the UK, are making taking the steps to appoint someone, or at least taking the steps to gets to the point where. A minister has been appointed to look at it. And I suppose I think, not only could I never see it, it would never happen with the current Tory government. Never happen. There would never be a minister appointed to look at the suicide rate, mental health rates, depression rate. Never in a million years. And is that a cultural thing? Is that a Japanese thing where, you know, they look after their, their young and their old, people are seen as important? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but it says that officials in Japan have appointed a minister of loneliness after suicide rates increased in the country for the first time in 11 years, which is which is alarming, which is alarming. Uh, this is going to be good. going to try and say these names. Minister Tetsushi Sakamoto. What a name! Minister Tetsushi Sakamoto uh, is already responsible for dealing with Japan's declining birth rate. What? Name this pumping. And promoting regional revitalization was appointed to the new position by Prime Minister, oh, here we go, Yoshi Hyde Suga. He's, he's dealing with a decline in birth rate in Japan. See, that's one of the things where like, they want the, the nation to be strong, you know. One nation. They'd be shagging anymore, gaffer. Maybe that's because it's all the mad fucking robotic sex and everybody's playing AI games. Imagine being a minister. What have you got? Health, right? Travel. You what probably want to be uh, the foreign foreign minister. <laughs> Why did that sound weird when it came out? You get to travel and go to state dinners. You want to be the uh, the minister for shagging and hangings. <laughs> Maybe don't laugh or refer to it as minister for shagging and hangings, but you're responsible for shagging and suicide. That's probably a good gig, isn't it? Again, two birds, one stone. Get everybody their hole. Nobody wants to kill themselves anymore. How you do that, I don't know. Imagine going to like a government funded brothel. Imagine turning up to a knocking shop. I'm just dead sad and um the the minister yoga shaki nogo says I have to come in here and, and get my hole. Up you pop. There's <laughs> a bowl of cream eggs on. Fire one of them up your ass, somebody will with you in a second. Is it a man or a woman you're after? I'm no bothered. Send in the team. Getting interviewed after it. How was that? Do you know what? See when I went in, I was really unhappy, but see, dude, I'm, I'm light on my feet. I feel rested. I've had a good pump, and I'm I'm going to I'm going to tackle the day. <laughs> Minister for shagging and hangings. 
Uh, Sakamoto will be in charge of overseeing government policies to deal with loneliness and isolation uh, in, a, in an effect, sorry, in an effort to reduce negative feelings among residents. The move comes following a rise in suicides during the coronavirus pandemic, which I imagine has been seen across the world, through which people have been restricted from seeing loved ones uh, and having in-person social interactions. In October alone, more people died by suicide than the total number of people who had lost their lives to coronavirus in Japan at that point in the year. Let me read that again, because that's fucking mental. In October alone, more people died by suicide than the total number of people who had lost their lives to coronavirus in Japan at that point in the year. Now, that's a that's an alarming figure, and probably something, again, I don't know the numbers, but probably something that relates to most countries across the world, and probably something that's not been discussed. I have certainly never seen anything discussed about it on mainstream media. You occasionally get these stupid articles that come out, it's like, people are really lonely during lockdown, so why don't you get on this app and just have some cyber sex? What the fuck? That, that would probably be an interesting number to have an interesting discussion, nobody would want to have it now. How many people have taken their own life during lockdown? And what is the direct comparison to the number of people who have actually died from coronavirus? Not that I'm saying coronavirus isn't serious or that it's not real. I'm just saying it does feel as if if you have died from anything else in the last year, not only does it not count, but nobody really cares. More people took their own lives in October in Japan than had died from the virus in the country up until that point. That is alarming. And how many are similar in the UK? According to the Japanese National Police Agency, um, 2,153 people died by suicide in October compared to a total of 1,765 uh, deaths from the virus uh, at the beginning of the outbreak up to the end of October 2020. Japan saw a surge in coronavirus cases in December and has now recorded more than 7,500 coronavirus deaths. While male suicides fell slightly, suicide rates among women uh, surged nearly by 15%, contributing to the overall increase. In October 2020, 879 women died by suicide in Japan, 70% increase compared to the same month in 2019. In a news conference announced in the role of the Minister of Loneliness, Prime Minister Sugu told Sakamoto women are suffering from isolation more than men and the number of suicides is on a rising trend. I hope you identify problems and promote policy measures comprehensively. Um, Mikoko Uende, a Japanese professor who studies suicide in Japan, noted that the country has seen a large rise in single women living alone, but many of them don't have stable employment. I mean, even that itself takes in a huge thing to consider, but I suppose it's um, fair play to the, the people of Japan and the, uh, the Japanese Prime Minister for even taking an attempt to, to, to discuss that and, and actually appoint a minister to look into it as, uh, would be a huge step. It would be, it would be very, um, it would be very nice to see something similar done in Scotland, you know. Um, but who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Right, let's finish off with the uh, usual nonsense news story from our friends at the Metro. Free newspaper for a reason, free because it's shit. Uh, Katie Clinton, sorry, Clifton, my apologies, Katie, writes this article. Headline reads, Giant teddy bear held to ransom in exchange for two Greg's sausage rolls. A tale as old as time. A tale as old as time. I imagine Disney will be clambering for the rights to this story. It's amazing, again, it makes it into the news, isn't it? Uh, a manhunt, believe it or not, is underway after a moral-boosting teddy bear was stolen. The thieves uh, have also left a sinister, no a sinister note demanding uh, food from Greg's or else, in quotes, or else. We want two sausage rolls from Greg's or the fucking bear gets it. Uh, the bear, which was known for holding a sign saying, keep smiling, uh, was last seen outside Metro Nightclub in Ardrossan, Ardrossan, in Ayrshire, uh, on Friday evening at around 6.30pm. 
The ransom note, which has been posted repeatedly across the town, said, We have your bear rainbow. So pay up, you fucking cunts. We have your bear rainbow. If you want to see rainbow again, bring me two Greg's sausage rolls to the second green bench at Glebe Park tomorrow, 11am or else. Now, has the bear been returned? Were the sausage rolls offered in exchange for the bear? Is this the most exciting thing to happen to a Drossen in years? Possibly yes. Is this an elaborate plan from the Greggs branch of our dressing to try and get advertisement for the sausage rolls? I do not know. I do not know. The case continues, I would hope. Uh, however, the people of our do not negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> oh. The people of our do not negotiate with terrorists. I hope they get the mayor on the phone. You know, Mayor Franco, you're not going to believe this. You know the bear rainbow outside the metro with a sign keep smiling? I do indeed. He's gone. He's gone, Your Honour. You're fucking joking. No, he's gone. Has there been a, has there been a, any communication from the terrorists? There has been, Your Honour. Right, Honourable Franco. And what are their demands? They're, they're, they're great. They're, they're too high for a small town like Aldrosin to cope with. Tell me what they're asking for, man. They've asked for two Greg sausage rolls. The bastards! <laughs> the local press are looking for a statement. You tell them the people of Adrosan do not negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> I can't even believe it actually says this in an article. The people of Adrosan do not negotiate with terrorists or hostage takers. Just so everyone's clear. Just so we're all fucking clear. Because this, this could be the start of it. I imagine they're all sitting in the tune hall shiting themselves going, listen, if we give in to these bastards, we're going to have people getting kidnapped left, right and centre. Eh? You pay up two sausage rolls, and I know you're maybe thinking, it's only two sausage rolls, it's only two Greg sausage rolls, what's that, two quid? I could fucking take that, I could send them six sausage rolls, but what happens next week, eh? They go and left old Agnes, the lollipop lady, they were paying out fucking private jets and helicopters to get her returned. We do not negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> People have gone mad in lockdown. Uh, we do not negotiate with terrorists or horses takers and have refused to bend to the demands of the Ted Napper. In any case, the nearest branch of Greg's is currently closed due to the pandemic. Oh, nobody's thought this through. Nobody's thought this through. I mean... You know, when, when they first asked for two Greg sausage rolls, you're thinking, what a shite demand. But when you realise that Greg's is actually closed because of a global pandemic, so you would effectively have to get the head of Greg's, Mr. Greg's himself, or Mrs. Greg's, to authorise the reopening of a local branch in order that the ovens can be fired up to create two tasty treats for the bear to be released. Suddenly, that a small demand becomes a great thing. Uh, speaking to uh, speaking of the sadness uh, at Rainbow's disappearance, one resident said it was fun and seemed to lift community spirit. Now, is he talking about the bear or is he talking about the kidnapping? The town was given false hope over the weekend when a bear was spotted outside a care home. Oh, fuck. We're getting, we're getting false sightings now. <laughs> Hello, is this the Adros and Beagle? I think the Rainbow Bear is outside the Silver Lining care home. Oh, no, nope, sorry, son. That's actually a dead pensioner. My apologies. However, uh, that was found to be another toy called Stormzy. Uh, slightly racist. Uh, and not Rainbow. Uh, so the hunt continues. The hunt continues for Rainbow the Bear. Uh, I just hope that the kidnappers um, have not caused them any harm or injury. And that their uh, their thirst for Greg's baked goods is met. Uh, that story... Uh, of course, from the Metro, Katie Clifton. Uh, and if you wish to continue with uh, hearing more about that story, then I suggest you check out the Metro's website. Right, that's it. Team, that's it for another week. Another episode, episode 70, in the bag uh, of the Scott Gibson Show. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please do share it. Please share it in your socials. Uh, make sure you subscribe. The video episodes are available on YouTube as well. Uh, if you've not watched them, check them out and make sure you subscribe to the channel because for the love of God, we've got to grow those numbers. In the name of Christ, we've got to grow those numbers. Um, merch is out as well. 
get that uh, on my website, bigscottgibson.com. Uh, we've got a quiz t-shirt and a tote bag. More merch will be coming very soon. So if you haven't snapped one of them up, go and get them now. That's it. Uh, in the meantime, look after yourself, stay safe. If you want to get more content from the show, become a Patreon, become a rascal uh, on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Big Scott Gibson, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Big Scott Gibson. All links on the website. You can get uh, access to the Sunday service, which is a Patreon-only podcast that goes out, believe it or not, every Sunday. So do that, subscribe, share, do all the stuff, and uh, stay safe, look after yourself, wash your hands, and your arsehole, and hopefully soon, soon, I will see you on a battlefield.